here. Okay, Bellinger? Here. Boren? Here. Carlson? Here. Decker? Here. Donahue? Here. Hammond? Here. Heidemann? Here. Koff? Excuse. Lassard? Here. Lewandowski? Here. Matichek? Here. Raisler? Here. Van Ekren? Excused. Vanderweel? Here. Versi? Present. And Wangaman? Excused. 13 present. Thank you. If you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you. Um, next we have the approval of the minutes. Alderman Carlson. Move to approve. Second. There's a motion and a second under discussion. Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, next, resignations. City Attorney McLean. Uh, <clears throat> John Dolson is advised the, that he's resigning from the Historic Preservation Commission effective immediately. Uh, he was just elected county clerk and is gonna be taken over shortly and working on preparing for this. All right, Alderman Carlson. Move to accept and file the resignation. Second. So motion and, so, uh, motion and second to accept and file. Um, clerk will call the roll. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Donahue? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Lassard? Aye. Lewandowski? Aye. Matichek? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. And Bellinger? Aye. 13. Motion carries. Next we have public forum, City Clerk Richards. Okay, first on the list would be Chris Velasi. Chris, if you could come up to the podium, please. Chris, can I have your home address? 508 North 13th Street. And if you want to hold on just a sec. And you will have five minutes. <coughs> okay, thanks. First of all, thank you, Susan. Appreciate it. Um, to the council members, I own Greco Cab Service. We just passed the uh, taxi meters, which I pushed for because I felt that the city of Sheboygan, the constituents were not getting a fair treatment from other cab services. So I decided to put my own in. Well, as we had the meter put in, I have to get it certified, which is paid on certification. Well, as we passed these through the, through the common council and a law on licensing, I went through four meetings. There was only one meeting where we said how much some of these costs are gonna be and that was the last meeting here where they had said that it was going to be about a minimum of $200. Well, I get a letter the other day saying that we are now going to have a $40 meter fee, a $50 initial processing fee, and an annual base fee of $30. Added on to the fee that we normally do to the city and then added on to the fee of the certification. So now, for me, I don't care, I have my own. You got six or seven comp companies that have five or six cabs. When I researched this, the meter, the meter itself, I got lucky and I found a guy out of Milwaukee, I paid 310 bucks. That's a brand new one. If you get a used one, it's gonna be about $200. Added all these fees, it's gonna come close to $400 for one cab. Just, and most of that's the, the, the permits. Now, when I called the state guy, he had no clue on this at all whatsoever, which is fine. And I can understand a $50 uh, processing fee. Now I was told the other day that uh, it goes through weights and measurements and you need a permit from them to have the meter in. Well, four meetings and two common council meetings and nobody said anything. That's pretty frustrating, especially when you when you get phone calls from other cab companies yelling at you, knowing that you pushed for this, saying now you just cost us X amount of dollars, which, you know what, fine and dandy, I understand that, but just the fact that the five, the, the six meetings and nobody said anything. You know, I don't have a problem with being 
certified and doing those things, but now to get it certified twice. Now I have to pay this $40 fee plus the initial $40 fee that I already paid. Now you're looking at 80 bucks. Now the, the processing fee is for what? The state guy? Okay. And then the $30 base fee is for what? No one said anything to us the last minute and it was thrown at us last weekend, which is, or Friday, which is, you know, I mean, that's a pretty tough nut to swallow at that point. That's a lot of money up front right away. And I just did this just because I felt that nobody was getting a fair shot out there as far as the customer. You know, one day they're paying five bucks, the next day they're paying seven. Here was a good opportunity to show that everybody's gonna be seeing what they're gonna be paying, and now, I guess no good deed goes unpunished that we're going to have to come up with this, you know, and I feel bad for the other companies that, you know, they got seven cabs. You're looking at probably two grand just to, for permits and, and meters as opposed to what it was before if it would have been $200 if they bought one with their initial, um, with their initial fees that they normally pay to get a driver and a van, what the cities are, but now... They're going to go, like I said, I got four or five phone calls yelling at me that this is what happened. So I decided that I'd come and let you guys know that we believe that this is kind of unfair at this point. Um, if there's something that can be done, if not, I mean, I'll pay it. I don't have a problem with that. But it just seems to me a little bit in excess for that purpose and what we've tried to accomplish with having the meters in the vehicles, you know, we're small businesses. We're not making a lot of money. You know, there's a lot of us, but like I said, when it's a $4 ride here or $3 ride there, that's a lot of money going up front, especially with insurance being as high as it is. So it's, it's and I feel bad for, like I said, my good friend at All Star, they're paying, they're paying a lot of money for insurance. Now to add this stuff in there, that's a lot of money to come up with. And it's gonna be a tough one, you know. So if there's something that we can revisit to see why these extra charges are there, and then if it's legitimate, okay, it's there, and we have to do it. But up until that point, this is not a, a fair shake for us. Thank you very much. Thanks, Chris. <clears throat> Thank you. And next. next, Mike Burnett. <clears throat> You may go. So. All right, yeah, Mike Brunette. And your address, um, Mike? 1925 South 26th Street. Okay. And um, I'm looking, I think you're voting on, I don't know if it's being presented or voted on, but a study on um, organization of the fire department tonight. And I like studies, I like studying studies, but if anybody's familiar with the Giegel principle, garbage in, garbage out, and it's like you get what you ask for. And basically, when you read the layout of what you're asking for, you're asking them to compare ultra comparables instead of asking them, how would you really revise things and what would you do, pie in the sky, what would you do, what would be the best case scenario to come in and revamp a fire department and make it nice and efficient. Like in there, there's a lot, you know, for. It's asking them to compare similarly sized cities and similarly staffed fire departments. Right there, you're binding them to the fact that it has to be that big. And if anybody's seen the, looked at the numbers of what they're producing right now, it is also a leading statement saying what it does. But if you look at percentage of calls, it's overwhelmingly ambulance and then fire, fire department. And correct me if I'm wrong, but that was my understanding on it. But it reminds me of back in the day when I was in Minnesota, where we had a directive to redesign our newspaper. I go into the first meeting, and I look, and we have all the newspapers from around our area. Such great, the fearable Minnesota paper, the Owatonna paper, and I'm kind of like, this is ridiculous. And I went and looked at what the top 20 design papers in the country were, had them overnighted, we basically took the best principles from everything and we went with that and it ended up, we were the biggest chain in North America at the time and uh, several hundred papers adopted <coughs> our layout including the Sheboygan Press at the time. But basically we went for what's the gold standard? What's the best we can get? What's the best bang for the buck? But that study leaves it open to get what can we get that's kind of like what 
Fond du Lac has, Kind of Lake's what Waukesha has, and if that's the best in the world, cool. But I'm thinking it's probably not. And switching it up on subjects now, and it's like the great mayor's race at Perpetual is going to be starting off, and right now there's two people in it, as far as I can tell, Terry Van Akron and Mike Vandersteen, and I don't know. There will be more. There always is. But it's like right now it's made the best van win, and it's like, and I, to me, it really doesn't matter which one, as long as they represent the city well and are straight open with it. And it's like, I cover politics a lot, and I don't try to hammer people on anything other than issues, but this is an example that this is, yeah, what, but it's like, this is an example. This is John Kerry when it was at the point where they were be right before the Iowa caucuses from the thing of it. And it's like, I was offered $2,000 for this sight unseen, but this had the possibility of becoming that tank picture. And it's like, you guys saw it, my class saw it, a bunch of visiting professionals saw it. Other than that, nobody has, has even seen this, because it's kind of one of those, this shouldn't, this just shouldn't wreck somebody's career, one way or another. And at the same time, same thing with this, I mean, in fairness, you know, Hillary Clinton, and it's just one of those little things there's nothing you can do about. I mean, it's, and it's just really, Nothing, but people use little things to try to knock people off their plank. And it basically, she's doing nothing but addressing it, but it just freezes on, and it says, Senator Ronald Clinton, well, did you have a good night tonight? And, and this is her speaking, and she's, do you feel like you're all fired? But somebody wanted to use this, and needless to say, no papers want it. The Republican Party wanted both of these, because they wanted to hammer on both of them. And it's just, I'm looking forward to what's coming up, and it's like, I just hope everybody plays fair, that's all I got. <laughs> okay, thank, thank you very you much. Mark. All right. Um, under, I guess, acting mayor's comments. Um, first off, I just want to thank everybody for last week, um, making it in on Friday, Wednesday, Monday, the previous Wednesday. Um, I know for a lot of you, you had to rearrange schedules and things like that, so I, you know, I really appreciate your efforts um, last week. All right. Um, consent agenda. Two one through two nine, Alderman Carlson. I move to accept and file all ROs, accept and adopt all RCs, and pass all resolutions. Second. All right, we have a motion to accept and file all ROs, accept and adopt all RCs, and pass all resolutions. Under discussion. The clicker is working. The clicker is working. Clerk will call the roll. Thirteen eyes. Motions carry. 3-1 through 3-5 to be referred. 4-1 uh, was withdrawn. 4-2 through 4-6 to be referred. 5-1, RC by law and licensee recommending denying beverage operator license 9781 based on her failure to accurately reveal all relevant convictions on her application and a record of violations related to the license activity. All the person Vanderwill. Thank you, I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. There's a motion and a second to um, accept and adopt the RC. Is Jessica Lyons here this evening? She's not here. Um, the vote was three to one to deny based on, um, mainly based on a pending unlicensed person serving alcohol and some of the things that she um, said during her, during her um, interview with us. There's a motion and a second to accept and adopt. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those, uh, uh, oops, sorry, the clerk will call the roll. 13 eyes. 6 1 lies over. 7 1 resolution 101 12 13 by older persons Hammond Carlson and Riesler entering into contract with Tyler Technologies for implementation of the human resource module of Munis software. Alderman Carlson. Thank you. I move to pass the resolution. Second. There's a motion and a second to pass the resolution under discussion. Hearing none, the clerk will call the roll. Thirteen eyes. Motion passes. Other matters. Or excuse me, City Attorney McLean. Eight point one is an RO by the City Clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2013, <coughs> and June 30, 2014. It'll be referred to lawn licensing. Eight point two is an RO by the City Clerk submitting a communication from Richard Rupnick requesting a waiver from the sex offender residency restrictions in order to live at 1416 Lens Court. 
That'll be referred to public protection and safety. Any other documents? That's it. That's it. Um, we'll be Alderman adjourned. Carlson. Move to adjourn. Second. Motion and second. All those, uh, the roll, please. 13 eyes. Thank you very much.